Thank you, sir. A field goal separates these two teams as we come back for this second half. This one fielded at the five. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. And New York set to take the field. They have the lead now. They'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you turn that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies. Try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. Let's see if they do just that. Well, we saw them there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. And he'll get about four across the 30 to the 32. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. Out of the gun now on third down. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Ten yards is the pickup. Good enough for a Jet first down. got three. got three. Three down. Three down. Hey, Sam off. They'll run on first down. Jamison. And oh, it coughed it up. And now the Rams have got it. Going the other way. And his guys are going to take over at the 39-yard line. So the defense there, opportunistic. It's nice to give them credit, isn't it? Because so many times it's more a matter of what the offensive guy didn't do. He didn't secure the ball, didn't cover up. In this case, let's just give credit to where it belongs. Knocked it free, made a big play. Jets offense coming up now to start their next drive. Now, yeah, last drive, obviously not what you're looking for. You've got the lead. You've got to protect the football. So, in other words, someone got lucky because they've been moving the ball really well and wearing them down. In this case, though, giving up the football doesn't make them very happy. They can't wait to get back out there and atone for it. Yeah, try to atone for it here on this drive. They brought the blitz that time, and I thought they were going to get to him, but instead he flipped it on its ear and ended up picking up positive yardage. I thought he was dead to right. But you are exactly correct, sir. Able to turn that into a positive game. Ready, ready. Ten, two, stop. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it's a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. So second down, still 10 yards to go. Ball on the 43. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he's able to carve out about six there, down to the 37. He'll look to throw. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Aaron Donald in there for sack number 127 in his great career, moving in past Kansas City Hall of Famer Derek Thomas on the all-time list. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. 
Out come the Rams. They'll have it first here to begin the third quarter. They're down here, but very much in this game. What's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. Goff on third down. Man open. It's Cup. He's got it. The 40. The 30. 10. Touchdown, LA. Cooper Cup, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Rams are going to jump back in front. It was third and medium. They popped the short pass, looking to pick up the first, accomplish that mission, and then they accomplished a lot more on that mission all the way for the score. Let me focus in on one word you used, pop, right? They popped the short pass, and then what happened after that? They popped the big run because now, once he caught it, didn't have anyone else in the vicinity to bring him down, and he takes off, and he kept going. Nice gutsy call, even better execution. Jets offense coming up now to start their next drive. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. There's a ball thrown right side and complete. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. Give him 15 yards on that one, and the Jets move the chains. As a general rule, offensive linemen like to know where their quarterback's going to be when he's setting up to throw the football. But sometimes they just have to get on the run, get on the move. He was able to do that on that play and picks up a first down with a nice throw. Flush to his right, and now he's going to use his legs. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. Going on the ground with Madison. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is what every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. Looks like he's going to get a couple here on this first down carry, and that'll make it second and eight. Up from the secondary to make the tackle, Jalen Ramsey. On play action, they'll throw. They'll let this go for the end zone. And this is going to be intercepted. Monte Nicholson picks it. And that's a great example of ball skills right there, partner. You and I do a lot of games, and I can't tell you how many guys look to run with the football before they've intercepted it. So that's a nice job of focusing on the task at hand and coming away with the interception. And defensive back Jamal Adams in on the stop. The stop for no gain brings up second and 10 from the 20. Again, it's Bell. And he'll push forward for about four up to the 23. Tough first half for him, unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing. But with a guy like him, you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well. This is caught. It's Cooks. Catch number 40 for him on the year. It's a first down. Nice catch right there. Brings to mind the sentence, when in doubt, find your veterans. You used to laugh back in the day when they would call guys like him crafty veterans. You get up in your 30s, you're still playing receiver, but you're around that long at that position, you're doing something right. Just remember this. When he was young, he thought the crafty veteran was simply a guy who couldn't run anymore. Now he understands a little bit better. On second down now, it's Bell. Le'Veon Bell, kiss him goodbye. The 20, 10, touchdown LA. Le'Veon Bell, 
His fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Rams tack on to their advantage. They've done a good job of holding him down in the first half, but he... Explodes for a big one right there. Yeah, I've got an image in my head of him being surrounded by a bunch of people, really, with ropes and other things trying to keep him locked in. But eventually they got tired, too. And just as you noted, he broke out. And it's a guy that usually you can only keep down for so long. Extra point right down the middle. And that pushes the lead up to 11. This is taken at his four. Gets past one man. Jets offense coming up now to start their next drive. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive or no? You just throw that out the window. I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. Second and three. He's airing it out for Williams. And that'll be incomplete. Good protection that time, and they couldn't hook up on the long one. Now it's third down. The Jets on third down. Five out of nine thus far. This time it's third and three. They'll look to throw here. Able to find Walter. That's complete. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple of scores. And they've really got to get some yards in chunks. And they know the defense doesn't want to give those up. They've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? Now back to throw. That's complete to his tight end, Waller. A gain of six there on first. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Second and four. Dancing to his left. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm. Incomplete. Now it's third down. The Jets on third down. They're hitting at 60%, six out of ten thus far. This is third and four. Back to throw here. And he'll avoid the tackle there with a slide. Five yards on the scramble, and that's enough to pick up the first. We just saw a nice example of why teams often bring in baseball guys to teach quarterbacks how to slide in key situations. You want to protect your franchise guy, make sure he doesn't get hurt. He did exactly that on that play. A perfect slide to avoid the big hit and pick. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked off by the linebacker, Corey Littleton. So another interception, CD, and it feels like he's starting to unravel a little bit. And as you would expect, still a work in progress here in his second season. He has to start ironing out some of these mistakes, though, because now his head coach, his offensive coaches, they have to evaluate whether you keep playing him and let him work through it, or you start thinking about going to his backup. As I was watching the play unfold, my eyes immediately went to the referee because I wanted to see, was he going to put those two hands over his head and that universal signal for a safety? But it's at the one-yard line. You know you're playing with fire when you get sacked that close to the goal line. On second down, it's Bell. Le'Veon Bell, it's a foot race. 
Touchdown, LA! Way beyond Bell. 99 yards. And the Rams tack on to their advantage. And that run massively increased his production in this game, and now he's over 100 yards. And break out your calculator, partner, because his yards per carry went up it's significantly, right? right? Big-time jaunt all the way to the end zone. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Jets offense coming up now to start their next drive. They're sort of seeing themselves spiral out of control. Let's see if they can get things back on track. And this is where the coach is walking that line of being calm and really being firm with his team. Add one, tell me once, you know, we were having a tough patch. This two shall pass, this two shall pass, and it finally kept having a rough patch. He said, but you got to do something Heads up. to make it pass. And that's what they have to do. They've got to get some control back, get themselves reasserted, and calm things down. See if they can get calm and reassert themselves here. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. Good yardage after the catch. Is that play good for 30 and a first? Uh, defensively, I know they have the comfortable lead here in the fourth, but they do not want to give up big plays like that. They want to finish strong. So oftentimes in this situation, you tighten up underneath in your coverage and you bring your safeties back. They can pick up anything that leaks Defense. through. But in the meantime, upfield, you're making plays on the football. So that flag will cost them 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it that's going to be 15 yards. The penalty moves him into the red zone here on first and 10. Looking to throw. Herring. And the Rams got it. They bring him down. Brandon, I think you understand the type of afternoon this offensive line is having. It is a long one for them. Long for you to spend it with me. Long for them trying to block those guys. They've given up a whole lot of sacks. And the speed and quickness that defensive line is eating them alive. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. Catch is made by Hurd. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. And a field goal obviously means nothing here. They're going to go ahead and go for it on fourth down. They'll try and run for it. And he will have the first down before he's brought down at the three. Able to convert on fourth to bring up first and goal. That's a big three yards right there. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Jets. A great play there. His fourth touchdown on the year. And the Jets are able to close the gap just a bit. Now let's not forget that was all set up by the fourth down conversion earlier in the drive. Would have been a complete letdown if the drive doesn't culminate this way, wouldn't it? If you're going to go for it on fourth down, your intention is to make sure you get a touchdown out of the drive. And that's exactly what they did. Converted, and then converted a second time for six points. This is taken at the three. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. Here we go. And we put our focus now on Le'Veon Bell. He has a chance to hit that often elusive 200-yard mark on this drive. And most of the time during the game, people aren't keeping track of individual statistics. Are you Defenders giving chase, but I don't think they're going to get there. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. Cooper Cup, 78 yards. And the Rams tack on to their advantage. Well, that is certainly a deflator right there defensively. Their guys just came off of a touchdown drive. They're back in the game, and then bam, they give up a touchdown one play later. How about that? And the momentum, which seemingly had shifted the other direction, thought we might be seeing a comeback. <laughs> that momentum right back the other way. Well, that is certainly not complimentary football that we saw right there. The defense is supposed to help their offense, not give up another touchdown. 
Getting set to go again as we look at the back heading onto the field again. He's been a good workhorse. I know we use the word workhorse a lot, but he's been a good workhorse for him in this one. No doubt about it, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's what you're looking for if you're back, because that means everything's coming together for you. And now this is intercepted. My goodness. Picked off near the 34, and his guys are going to take over at the... Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Why were they clicking on offense? They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feeling like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. So for the Rams, the win gets them a step closer to 500 at 5-6. Five and six. And they'll hit the road next week to take on the Arizona Cardinals. Meanwhile, for the Jets, they've fallen out of things now as they sink to 3-8. and eight. And they'll get a chance...